Bite Force presented by the Danbury Public Library. Our goal in this program is to discover which animal currently living on the planet has the strongest jaws in all the animal kingdom. So far we've learned that bite force is the amount of pressure a jaw can produce when biting down. We've also learned that polar bears have the eighth strongest jaws in the animal kingdom, gorillas have the seventh, bull sharks have the sixth, and jaguars have the fifth. This week, we're going to find out who has the fourth most powerful jaws. Can you guess which animal it is? I'll give you a hint. They're a large, bulky-looking animal that's native to Africa and spends most of its time in the water. They have huge mouths and teeth, but they mainly eat plants. Have you guessed what they are? This week, we're talking about one of the coolest animals in sub-Sahara Africa, the hippopotamus. Hippos are the second largest land animal, coming in after the elephant. While they look similar to pigs, their closest living relatives are actually cetaceans. This means their nearest living relatives are whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Being the second largest animal means that hippos are massive. They can reach lengths between 11 and 17 feet long. Male hippos are heavier than females, weighing between 3,300 to 4,000 pounds. Female hippos, meanwhile, can weigh between 2,900 to 3,300 pounds. Hippos have amazingly thick skin. Most of the skin on their bodies is up to two inches thick. This helps to protect them against predators like lions and crocodiles. That thick skin makes it much harder for them to be bitten. But there is a downside. That much thick skin makes it hard for the animal to stay cool. It also burns very easily in the hot sun because hippos don't have hair or fur to cover their bodies. To help them avoid sunburn, hippos spend most of their time in the water. On average, around 16 hours a day. This makes them what is known as semi-aquatic animals. An animal that spends most of its time in the water but also lives on land. Hippos have adapted well to this semi-aquatic lifestyle. To help them stay submerged or underwater as long as possible, their eyes, nose, and ears are located at the top of their head. This lets most of their bodies stay cool and protected by the water while their eyes and ears can watch out for predators. But if they do decide to sink down completely under the water, they can, holding their breath for up to five minutes at a time. Whoa, right? Their ears and nostrils close up when they dive down. This stops water from clogging their ears and noses. Hippos even sleep while in the water, using a reflex, an action that is done without thinking about it, that lets them bob up to the surface to take a breath and then sink back down underwater, all without waking up. Hippos have another way of protecting their skin from the sun. Sometimes if you look at a hippo, it might look like their skin is kind of red. Well, don't worry, the hippo isn't bleeding. It's actually secreting a special oily red liquid from their bodies that acts as a sunblock. Kind of like how we put on suntan lotion when we're going outside during the summer. As much time as they spend in the water, hippos must be great swimmers, right? Well, not quite. See, while hippos can move quickly through the water, they actually don't swim. In fact, they can't even float. What they do is they glide through the water by pushing themselves off of objects on the lake bottom or riverbed. So I want you to do something for me. I want you to imagine yourself in a lake where you can stand up and the water only comes up to about here on you. So you can easily swim if you wanted, but maybe instead of swimming, you decide you want to walk along the bottom. Walk around and you're digging your feet into the sand and the rocks that are on the bottom of the river and lake bed, right? Yeah, you done that before? Well, if you've done that when you're ever in the water, you're moving like a hippo does when it's moving through the water. It digs its feet into whatever's in the bottom of the lake or the river and uses that to propel itself forward. Hippos could once be found throughout most of the lower half of Africa and all the way up the Nile River, but today their range is much smaller. They've been hunted throughout history for their meat, 
their thick, strong hides, and their ivory, which is their teeth. This ivory has been used for jewelry in the past and was even used to make false teeth for people in the past. When the ban on elephant ivory went into effect in 1989, the hunting of hippos for their ivory increased. This lowered the number of hippos in the world, making them a vulnerable species. This means that if hunting isn't slowed down and hippo populations aren't allowed to increase, the hippo might become endangered and risk extinction. Hippos have an amazing bite, coming in at 1,800 PSI. That's 300 PSI more than the jaguar, 450 PSI more than the bull shark, 500 PSI more than the gorilla, and 600 more than the polar bear. Despite all that power, hippos are mostly herbivores. This means they eat plants, mainly grasses. They come out onto the land at night when temperatures are cooler to forage or search for food. And when you're as big as a hippo, you need a lot to eat. In one night, they can gobble up over 77 pounds of food. That's like eating 17 bags of potatoes in a single night. Yikes! Hippos are social animals. This means they live in groups. A group of hippos is called a pod. Pods are typically made up of 10 to 20 hippos and run by one dominant male. He's the strongest of all the hippos in that pod. So we know they like to gather around in groups, right? And we know that they eat grasses mostly. So why do they have such an impressive bite? Well, like the jaguar last week, hippos have both a wide mouth and an impressively large mandible. Look at that thing, it's huge. They also have a sagittal crest. And while it looks kind of small compared to the rest of their massive skull, it is still there and useful. All of this gives a lot of space for large jaw muscles to attach to. And as we've learned in the past, the larger the jaw muscles, the more powerful the bite. This massive biting strength is not used for food, but to defend themselves against predators and other hippos. Hippos are very protective of their pods and their watery territory. To ward off rivals, they do a threat display, opening their mouths wide open in a giant yawn. It looks kind of funny, and they might even give what sounds like a barking laugh. But the thing is, this isn't a laughing matter. These are very powerful animals, and what they're doing here is they're showing off their massive teeth. Those canine teeth, those really big pointy ones, can grow up to 20 inches long and are very sharp. And again, they're not used for food. They're used just to defend themselves. And they're so fearsome an animal that not even crocodiles want to mess with a hippo. Hippos have been known to attack crocodiles, lifting them up in their giant mouths and tossing them away from the pod. So remember the jaguar from last week? How we found out that they prefer to avoid humans whenever possible? Are hippos kind of the same way? Well, they kind of are. But the difference is that the hippo isn't afraid of us. Hippo's really not afraid of much of anything. It's big, it's powerful, and it knows it. And because of this, they are very fierce and kind of unpredictable animals. If threatened, a hippo will attack. And even if you're not threatening the hippo and you just happen to be too close to the water where their pod is, they will run at you. And even though they look like big lumbering animals, they're very quick. Hippos can run around 18 miles per hour on land for short distances. That's faster than most humans can run. Now, they're a little slower in the water, only moving around 8 miles per hour there. But that's still faster than most humans would be in the water. So, they can easily outrun us. Their lack of fear and territorial nature has led to them being considered the deadliest land animal. Because of this, hippos, as cool as they are, 
are best observed from a safe distance. Today we've uncovered who has the fourth strongest jaw in all the animal kingdom. Tune in next time as we discover who has the third strongest. Until then, stay safe and stay curious. Bye everyone!